This is an anime phenomenon that you need to stop watching. It's the kind of debate happening because it is a work of fiction that adapted a real life incident within the same year of the incident taking place. And now the family of the victims are furious. Watch Mojo needs to add this in their next top 10 anime betrayals video. Hello world, this is Dean from Japan. How are you doing today? Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more Japanese news and culture. In case you've never heard of it, Oshinoko is an anime adaptation of the manga comic book of the same name. The anime premiered on April 12, 2023 and has been a smash hit with TikTok trends, numerous advertisement deals, and its opening credit song being streamed more than 100 million times in a week. If you haven't heard it yet, it will get stuck in your head, and even Donald Trump has covered it. AI Donald is really about MAGA, make anime great again. In this video, I'll be first talking about the similarities between the two events, how the mother of the victim had acted and changed the Japanese law, how she is fighting abuse, and looking at what the authors are saying to see whether the similarities are just a coincidence. Also, how is the action series Gantz connected in all this? <laughs> So Oshinoko is about a set of twins trying to break out into the Japanese entertainment industry to seek vengeance. And that is the best I can describe the plot without spoiling too much. On May 16th, the anime aired an episode involving Akane, a young up-and-coming actress who appears in a popular dating reality show. Feeling pressured to leave her mark on the show after witnessing her manager getting scolded, she decides to play the villain. However, in her attempt to make the show more exciting, she accidentally scars her co-star's face. This leads to massive online backlash, which causes her to attempt to end her life. The original manga comic episodes for this story arc were published in November 2020. Now let's talk about Hana Kimura, a real-life incident that took place in Japan. Hana was a young up-and-coming female pro wrestler who appeared in a popular dating reality show called Terrace House. Feeling pressured to leave her mark on the show to promote the wrestling association she belonged to, she agreed to play the villain. After being pressured by the TV crew, she was instructed to slap the male co-star, but instead she knocks his hat off. This led to massive online backlash, which caused her in ending her life on May 23rd, 2020. And I don't know about you, but I think the two incidents sound quite similar. Is it just a coincidence? Regardless, many people made a similar connection, and when I first read the series, I saw it as how the author wished things were different. A lot of people were actually saying, Oshinoko portrayed online abuse perfectly, and that the series showed the dangers of online bullying and why people should be careful about what they say online. But what does the actual family member of the victim think? Kyoko Kimura, Hana Kimura's mother, tweeted on May 21st about the series, saying, By using an actual story directly, could they not have imagined that it would deeply hurt us, people who actually care about Hana? And airing the episode so close to her day of death, doing anything for a hit or to go viral. From the bottom of my heart, I look down on this. I don't want any of Hana's fans to watch this series. She goes on to explain that the details they discussed in interviews were used directly in the anime series. And I don't think anyone's gonna be surprised if I say this, but some anime fans can be toxic and they started attacking Hana's mom, saying things like, I felt this way since the incident of Hana taking her life, but she needs to stop making a scene. You are full of yourself and playing the victim. You just want to be famous by using your daughter's name. You turned from a grieving parent to an annoying person. And you just want attention. Ask yourself if you are truly doing it for the sake of your daughter. I've actually had people tweeting at me saying that Kyoko is ruining the anime they were looking forward to. And let me remind you, all of these tweets are quote retweets. So they are pretty much directly throwing abuse at the mother. So fans of an anime that highlights the danger of cyberbullying are sending abuse to the mother? One thing you have to remember is that Kyoko herself was a pro wrestler with years of career under her belt. And she actually took down the Japanese government and forced them to change the law. She is a fire both in the wrestling ring and in the real life. 
I did cover the topic in my video, but Hana Kimura did receive an insane amount of online abuse. Before ending her own life, Hana said that she was receiving hundreds of abuse per day. However, only two of Hana's abusers were identified, and one of them was identified only because he directly apologized to Hana's family. They were only fined 9,000 yen or $64 each under the Japanese law at the time. $64 for participating in bullying that killed a young girl. $64. Kyoko also sued a man in 2001 who kept harassing her and wishing Hana was rotting in hell for getting Terra's house cancelled. The court ordered this anonymous person in his 40s to pay 1.29 million yen or $9,800, but he has not paid a single dime. Kyoko also filed a lawsuit against the three companies involved in Terra's house in December 2022, seeking around 142 million yen or $1 million. Furious at how the law couldn't punish these people, Kyoko started fighting and in 2022, the Japanese law was changed to impose tougher penalties for criminal defamation. Now convicted online abusers can end up in jail for a year and fined up to 300,000 yen or $2,200. That's like someone's monthly salary. The Japanese government also made it easier to identify online abusers. As I explained in the Matt Wash video, the author of the popular anime series Gantz took advantage of this law update after he pissed off Kamen Rider fans and got tons of abuse. And he actually made one abuser to apologize publicly, which is a lot better than what online abusers get in the manga he writes. <laughs> Returning to Kyoko raging a war against Oshinoko, she is a pro when it comes to handling attacks and has been clapping back against her haters. One person wrote to her, you know, Oshinoko is raising awareness to the issue, right? What's up with the snark? To which Kyoko replied, So if you are raising awareness, you can do anything? Fiction can also do that. I'm not asking for your opinions. So if you are going to share more of your unwanted opinions, I'll be blocking you. Slam! Another loser wrote, What if the author of the series becomes depressed because of you? What you're doing is the same as what people who abuse your daughter were doing. Wow, that is super low. Equating the mother with the low lives who abused her daughter. Kyoko snapped back saying, what are you going to do if I become depressed and die because of comments from people like you? There are many fans trying to defend Oshinoko by directly tweeting at the mother saying, there have been other cases of people taking their own lives as a result of appearing in a reality show. Okay, then find me another reality show incident similar to that of Oshinoko. Find me one. I think these people are throwing abuse at Kyoko because they know that if the family members of the victim say that they don't want their story turned into fiction, there is no moral defense against that. That is the ultimate trump card. And that's why they are resorting to insults and abuse because they got nothing else to say. Now, what did the Oshinoko authors say? Did they ever say that it was based on the Terrace House incident? Oshinoko is written by two people, Mengo Yokoyari, who does the art and is famous for her work, Scum's Wish, and Aka Akasaka, who is in charge of the story. In January 2020, Mengo complained that she was forced to watch Terrace House, which apparently traumatized her. I guess dating shows don't have enough nudity like the manga she writes. In June 2020, Akasaka tweeted, I didn't plan it, please read the series thinking that things just happened at the same time. And in July 2021, he stated that he had planned to feature a dating reality show even before the series began. I covered this before, but this kind of reminds me of how the creator of Squid Game claimed that he has read all these popular manga series, but not the one, exactly this one that was extremely similar to Squid Game. <laughs> In 2022, Akasaka claimed that the cyberbullying arc was a turning point, a daring maneuver that made me realize what appeals to the reader's emotions. Aka, <laughs> you know that a person actually died? Saying that it was a daring maneuver kind of makes you sound like a scum. <laughs> Fans are using these details to say, see, it's just a coincidence. 
Kyoko is mixing up anime and reality. But the thing is, Mengo admitted that she was watching Terra's house, so she must have known about Hana's case. Couldn't they have changed the details to make sure that the two cases didn't seem too close? I understand that as an author, you can get inspired by real life incidents and want to inject your own opinions, but should we be fictionalizing an incident that happened within the same year? And either way, the broadcasting company itself declared online that the story was based on the Terrace House incident. So the production team can't really wiggle out of this one. In an interview on May 23rd, Kyoko said, Hana's friend who watched Oshinoko without knowing that it was based on Hana's death was so distressed that she couldn't even breathe. The anime was using the exact verbal abuse that Hana received. Why would they use the actual words? I felt like Hana's death was used like a copyright-free material, and I could not let this one slide. Fans are saying to me that this anime is amazing for raising awareness, but why are the fans of such a wonderful anime series sending me abuse? I have no hate against the authors, but people didn't have to put this work out in a way that would hurt the actual victims of online abuse. I think you can enjoy the show and acknowledge that people around the authors could have told them to be a little bit more considerate. They could have changed a few details or consulted Kyoko first. It was a national incident that changed the law and how people interact online. The least they can do is to ask their fans to not harass Kyoko. People who act as if they can't enjoy the series anymore because Kyoko spoke out and are sending abuse to her really kind of proves that there are some people who just cannot learn a damn thing. So thank you for watching and what do you guys think? How long do you think an author should wait until he or she decides to take a real life incident and turn it into fiction? And if you like anime, let's show that we can learn things from anime and try to be civil to one another, at least on this topic. Let's be kind to one another, like real kind and not Ellen, I actually abuse my staff members kind. Try to do something kind this week. If we all did one kind thing. For I hope to see you guys soon. Till then, take care. By the way, Ryota Yamasato, a Terrace House host who was stoking hate toward Hana in the show, tweeted before the sixth episode that he was hooked on the show. I wonder what he thought about the reality show episode.